Hey everyone, it's Rob with Passport to the Parks, and today is Wednesday, June the 19th, and I'm here at Disney's Pop Century and Art of Animation Resorts uh, around Hourglass Lake, where they are doing more Disney uh, Skyliner gondola testing, which is one of my favorite things to watch, and hopefully you guys love coming along and watching too. Uh, they're actually stopping and starting today, and they're doing a lot of the, um, the PA testing, so you'll hear uh, them communicating back and forth that the, that the gondolas have shut down, um, you know, they'll talk about what's going on and then you'll hear another voice that comes over, kind of like the, uh, when you stop on a ride and it's, it's a female voice and she's saying, you know, sorry about the, the stop, we'll be starting momentarily, those kind of things. So it's kind of neat. There's uh, PA speakers on each of the towers here, so you'll be able to hear those messages uh, once you're up in the gondolas. Uh, you can't really hear them too well down here, you can just barely hear them around. Um, the resort here so that's a good thing so it's not going to be annoying to the people staying here but you'll be able to hear it really clearly when you're in the gondolas themselves uh, let me turn you around here so you can get a better view while i say hello to some people I actually got uh, a lot of weather that's going to be coming in and we're supposed to get a really bad storm coming i don't know if you guys can hear that it's kind of an echoey voice in the background hey kevin and Teresa, welcome buzz dog the lucky minute steve welcome p tier Oh, you're at Cedar Point. Very, very cool. That's my, uh, that's my old stomping grounds there. You got to ride the uh, the Von Roll Skyway there. Happy Mickey Adventures. Welcome, Tracy. David, welcome. Camille, welcome. Lisa. Uh, Mike Scott, welcome. Mr. Cruise Fever. Todd. Menu Rager. Darren. Zippity Doodad. Awesome to have you here, my friend. Uh, Sherry. I love watching. Uh, coming to Pop Century and Art in August, hoping they will be open. Uh, just can't wait to see. You know, you never know, Disney still is claiming the fall, but you know, as we walk around, we, we talk about this all the time. You know, we use our eyes and we see what's going on here. There's so much progress. You know, uh, an end of summer is uh, definitely a possibility. I would assume that they'd want to get this open before Galaxy's Edge, which would be completely awesome. You can see the water is really starting to to kind of ripple and stuff here. There's a, a breeze that's kicking up. It's really getting cloudy. It's supposed to get some really bad storms coming in. Actually, when you look at those, those wrappings, they are pretty translucent. So I don't think you're gonna have much of a problem seeing out of the gondolas with the wraps around them like that. Cause you can pretty well see through them pretty clearly when you're close to them. Hello, how are you? Hi. There's that cool Toy Story one. That is a pretty nice one right there. But again, my favorite shot of all the, uh, the Skyliners is right here for sure. Right across Hourglass Lake. Actually, this is pretty interesting here. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. See that gondola right there with that sunshine reflecting off of the, uh, right there, look at that. I saw another video before where this was happening at Hollywood Studios. That is a lot of glare. And it was actually coming through the parking lot and it was pretty blinding. And there's another one there. This green one's actually starting to do it as well. So when that sun hits that reflective glass, that, that really kicks up a glare. So that could be an issue, especially going through the parking lots, maybe going down Buena Vista Drive. That when you catch that just right, that could be pretty blinding when you're driving. So I have to be very careful of that, but that's also a really good thing because look how reflective that actually is on the outside of the gondola. It is reflecting all of the sunshine out of that gondola, which again is gonna keep it a lot cooler in there. That is really a lot of reflection. Check that out. Wow, that is bright. Hey Alicia, good afternoon. Yeah, I wish you were at Disney too. I wish everybody was here to see this. Steven, there is a Star Wars one. There's a, a Chewbacca one with the Porgs on it. See that, uh, that greenish one is starting to kick up a little bit too, so with that sun glare. Rick gonna be at Wilderness Lodge, 61 days away. Let's see if I can try to get a picture of that with that sun glare real quick while I'm here. If you guys don't mind. Let's 
see that's coming out. Yeah, a little bit. Hey, Steve Penn, thank you so much. $2 Super Chat. I hear annual pass can get you uh, in the Galaxy's Eye on August 11th. I had not heard a date. I know that they were looking at uh, letting annual pass holders in a little earlier. Uh, but August 11th, that is crazy awesome. I will definitely try to get uh, hooked up there. Matthew Kind, $14.99 Super Chat. Thank you so much for your kind support, my friend. It's always awesome. Really, really appreciate that. Actually, I'm going to show you guys here. This was all the, uh, the construction area that they're finally starting to take all the fencing down. So they're pretty much getting this all cleaned up. A lot of the, uh, the things were built in here. The, uh, a lot of the storage was done in here. They were bringing gondolas in. All the hangar arms were in here. This is where they built the rescue uh, pontoon boat that they have. So a lot of the fencing is coming down. They've redone all the sidewalks through here. It's actually a very nice uh, cast member over there, power washing. I talked to her on the way in. She said she's uh, she's ready to get this thing open too. She's excited about it, but she's over here cleaning up, you know, all this. So I don't know if you guys can hear that. It's the uh, yeah. It's it's a voice saying, you know, we're sorry about the inconvenience. The ride will uh, will start momentarily. So they're doing all that testing now. Looks like our sun has uh, gone behind the clouds, so no more glare for now. We're gonna start taking a walk around Hourglass Lake. Oh, there we go. Oh, look at that. Let's see if I can get that on video. There's really a lot of sun glare coming off. Again, that's a, that's a good thing. It's going to keep that sun protection inside the gondola, but it could really be uh, disturbing to drivers. You know, coming through the, the Hollywood Studios parking lot, coming down Buena Vista Drive. Cindy, it is very exciting. Lisa, I wonder if the voice I uh, will be heard from the nearby resort. Sounds pretty loud. Actually, I just said that it's, unless you're standing right underneath it, and even when I'm standing underneath the tower, it's really hard to make out what they're saying. You can hear it, but it's not, I mean, you can't hear it, like we probably won't even be able to hear it this far away. So if you're staying here in the resort, you're not gonna be able to hear it. They're, they're very uh, directional. I can't see one right now. Uh, they're up there though. They're, they're like um, just these little cone speakers that are up there these little megaphone speakers. So yeah, you can hear it a little bit back here, but it's not, uh, it's not gonna disturb anybody. Gee, this sounds like a soft opening might happen sooner than we think. I, I'm in agreement with you. You know, a lot of progress going on, unless there's anything internal, which you know, you hear all kinds of stuff that's going on. There's you know why there's delays but nothing that i see that um, really would hinder them getting this thing open a little bit earlier i would be excited for it every time i drive down onto property here you know I'm, I'm always looking up especially on the hollywood studios line in this line i'm always looking in the gondolas like one day i'm actually going to see a, a human being in there you know a cast member or something and then we're really going to know that we're, we're making progress. It's 
Let's see, Sherry Awesome Sunset Travel. Uh, they should be high enough on the side of the road that the sun glare shouldn't be an issue, hopefully. Uh, I saw somebody had tweeted a little video at Hollywood Studios and they were in the parking lot and it was pretty, uh, it was pretty predominant. I mean, it was, it was like blinding out the entire footage there. So, you know, if you catch it just right, you know, it might be an issue. And a lot of people are staring at these. I will admit myself, like when I'm driving down Buena Vista Drive, I'm, I'm like looking over at the gondolas a lot. Like I'm trying to pay attention to the road and I know it's a horrible thing, but they really are, I don't want to use the word distraction because they're just so awesome to look at and they're so impressive. But you know, you're paying attention. You keep looking over and you keep looking over. And so it's, uh, it'll be interesting to see you know, if there's any accidents or anything right around that, that stretch on Buena Vista there where the, where the gondolas are. If there's going to be uh, any kind of car accidents, I would assume they would be there just for people, you know, rubbernecking, trying to look at them. Hey, Robbie, thank you so much. Von Roll Skyway. Great job, as always. Thank you for supporting the Von Roll. Want to run sky rides in the Disneyland Skyway group on Facebook. It's awesome, man. You are a, a wealth of information. The Skyway, I mean, that's where it all started. So awesome, awesome stuff. Love, uh, love checking out that Facebook page and love talking to you, my friend. Learned a lot along the way. And Pete Tier, I don't know if you saw that, Robbie. Uh, Pete Tier is on here. He's actually at Cedar Point. So I told him to, uh, to jump on the, the Skyway there. I mean, cloudy days, bright days, night, anything here. This is just such gorgeous picture taking, gorgeous to look at here. And it really does fit in very well with this resort because this colors, I mean, the bright colors and everything. I mean, you look around, you see the resorts, the buildings, the really bright colors, whimsical characters. So the gondolas fit in perfectly here, especially with that art of animation side. Darren Bird, thank you so much for the super chat as well. Two dollars. Love your videos. Thank you very, very much, my friend. Hey, Matthew Fay and Casey, 63 days to your coming. Coronado Springs, they're waiting for you. John, uh, waiting for the buses to come over here from the Magic Kingdom now. Very cool. Hopefully I'll be able to stick around if the weather doesn't uh, boot me out of here. Actually, I'm kind of hoping it does start to rain. I love watching these during storms with the wind and the rain and stuff. And there you can see the, uh, the rescue boat. Let me zoom in a little bit. And that's what they will use to, to do rescues here on Hourglass Lake. That pontoon boat just goes right underneath the gondolas. Very simple process. You can just simply walk right out of your gondola. A lot of people were saying, oh, you know, what happens if you get stuck over the lake? Everybody's thinking this was going to be the worst evacuations. I think this is the easiest evacuations that they would have because that pontoon boat is so mobile. I mean, you can zip it right through the water and you're literally just walking out onto a platform, very easy. I'll head towards the station, see what's going on there. I'm hoping that we might get a sign on the stations sometime soon. In Pop Century and Art of Animation, all the golf carts, all kinds of carts going constantly back and forth through here.
Angela, hello. 101 days till you get here. Very awesome. I think the Skyliner should definitely be open in 100 days. Let me zoom in a little bit so you guys can get a better view. They have not started moving. They were moving, zipping along pretty good when I got here. So now, of course, they're going to slow them down. It may be because we have some weather rolling in. It doesn't look too severe right now. If there's any chances of lightning, I believe within like five miles, they will shut the, uh, the system down. Can you guys hear that, uh, that speaker standing right here? I, I heard it standing over here. It's kind of echoey, so it's hard to tell what they're really saying. There's the, the female voice then saying, you know, we're going to be starting momentarily. Veronica here from the UK. Loving the view. Nicole, do they have uh, lights? Or I'm sorry, Nicole, we have been told that the cast members are on them. I have not personally seen anybody on these yet. So if somebody's physically seen a cast member on here, that would be pretty cool. But I have not seen a, a, a human soul on one of these yet. The lucky minute, do they have lights on the inside? Uh, they do. I'm, well, I'm gonna say, I'm speculating that they, for certain, probably do. I have not physically been inside myself to see, but uh, we do know for a fact that there is power to the gondolas. Uh, there is a, and I've talked about this many times before, on top of the gondola there is a silver box, and that box is actually a battery pack, and that uh, goes up to some conduits that's on the, the, uh, the grip and the hanger arm, and as the gondola goes through the station, at any one of the stations, there's a uh, those conduits make contact in there and it actually charges that battery pack as it goes through. So it's constantly charging every time it goes through the station. And that battery will provide, if we're assuming lighting, uh, sound, music, you know, they're probably gonna have announcements in there. Uh, I've heard rumors that the music will actually possibly correspond to the gondola that you're in. So if you're in the Toy Story gondola, you might hear Toy Story music, uh, et cetera, et cetera. The announcements, I assume, would be similar to the monorail. Where it'll, you know, it'll tell you what you're passing over, what you're coming upon. I made a couple videos with the, um, the Riviera station and how the uh, loading and unloading process should work there. And I'm assuming the announcements will play a big part. As you're coming into the station, it'll say, you know, you're, you're now approaching the Riviera station if you'd like to disembark here. You can go ahead and do so if you'd like to remain on. You can continue to Epcot or vice versa if you're coming back to the Caribbean. You know, where you can find transfer service to Hollywood Studios. You'll probably get all that information and announcements as you're, as you're coming through. Doesn't look like they're going to start them up here. Hoping they do. They are awesome to look at like this, but they are so much more fun to watch in motion. They were zipping along Buena Vista Drive when I was coming in too. Down on the, uh, the Epcot line. They've got a couple crew members up there working on the roof. Oh, check that out. They have red fans there now. Those I have not seen. Those look new. Let me zoom in. Hope we can see those. There's red ceiling fans in there, which is really cool contrast to the, to the bright yellow poles. That looks really awesome. Then, of course, you have the red bull wheel right there. That's what is turning the haul rope itself.
love watching them come in and out of the station. And if you look right on the, uh, ah, it's gonna stop right there. Right on the top back of this gondola here, you'll see that box, that battery box. And that's what's gonna provide our, our power inside the gondolas. They have all the, uh, the ventilation windows open today. And again, when you're, when you're here in Florida, when it really gets rough is when that sun is pounding down on you. That's when the heat really starts to uh, take its toll. So, you know, if you don't have that sun, it can be extremely hot, but you can still be comfortable if you're out of that sun. So with that theory, you know, how much sun is gonna be blocked out of these gondolas with those reflective windows is gonna make a tremendous difference with the temperature inside the gondolas. And you're gonna have that airflow going through. So I'm, I'm not worried at all about the air conditioning issues in here. You know, because I'm standing here right now, there's a, a nice breeze that's just blowing on me. You can see the, the trees just blowing gently here. Uh, the sun is behind the clouds, so it's pretty comfortable. And I'm sweating a little bit just because I'm walking around holding the camera. But inside the gondola, I think it's going to be a, a comfortable ride. Robbie, I agree. Uh, I love that you can see the tech inside the station, the bull wheel. You can see inside where the, uh, the track is, all the wheels that, that power the gondolas around on the inside. And we'll kind of go through this again real quick. I, sometimes I like to touch on this for anybody who's, who's new. Uh, basically what happens is the cable that you see that the gondolas are attached to there, that is called the haul rope, and that travels around between each station. And inside the station, there's a, a big red wheel right there that's called the bull wheel and that's what the haul rope actually travels around. So as the gondola is traveling on that rope, there's a, you'll see the hanger arm that comes from the top of the gondola into what's called a grip and that's at the top there. And that grip is actually clamping down onto the haul rope. So it's, it's holding on, the haul rope is moving at a constant speed. So as the gondola is, is gripping onto that haul rope, it's being pulled around on that rope. So when it approaches the station, there's a mechanism in there that pushes down on that grip and the grip releases. The haul rope keeps traveling at the same speed, but the gondola moves onto a, second, uh, a secondary track inside there. And there's all kinds of these, these little rubber wheels. And that actually grabs that grip and it pulls it around inside. And that's how it slows down. Uh, when you see it enter the station, you see how it kind of tilts backwards because that momentum shift is coming from the full speed of the haul rope to when those wheels grab it and it slows it all the way down. And then those wheels actually have the gondola on the inside and it's traveling around at a very slow pace. Uh, and then it'll travel around, it'll wrap around, and then it'll come out on the other side here. And you can exit and you can enter. Uh, and then once you're on board, the doors will automatically close. And we'll watch this here. Uh, the doors will automatically close. We'll watch, say, the purple one. That'll be a good one to watch. So you're inside that gondola and it's still being held by those wheels on the inside. That's why it's moving so slowly. And at some point, once it reaches the end, you're going to see it reattaches right about there. And you can see the momentum as the, the haul rope is then pulling the gondola then out of the station. And it's reattached to that rope and that's how it travels along over the, uh, the towers. Now the stations do have a front track, so that's what we're looking at here. And then the stations also have a secondary track that would be located behind this building in particular. And that secondary track is used for uh, scooters and people who need extra assistance. They can take gondolas off of the, uh, the first track, they can move them back there, and then uh, you, can, you can load a wheelchair on, they can be fully stopped. And then once that scooter is on board, it just circles back around and it rejoins the, uh, the front row of gondolas here. And then it uh, travels out with the rest of them. It seems so complicated, but it's, it's actually such a, a simple theory when you think about it. And you can go online, you can see all kinds of videos of, of how the grips work and how they release inside the stations. There's a lot of cool videos out there that have, you know, close-ups of the tracks inside and you can see how you know, the, the spring-loaded grip releases and, 
you know, the haul rope as it's coming into the station kind of dips down a little bit. So the, uh, the grip stays level into the tracks and the haul rope kind of dips down a little bit. That's why it's able to uh, release and continue on through that bowl wheel. So there's a lot of theories as far as if there'll ever be any expansion for the Skyliner itself. And there's a couple different options that you could assume could happen. One of which is the, uh, the 90 degree turn over at the boardwalk parking lot could possibly work out some sort of an extension from there that you can continue on to go to uh, down Buena Vista, maybe to Coronado Springs and over to the Animal Kingdom. I think another good theory would actually be, hang on, did I get another? I'm sorry, Elbin, Elbin Schneider, or Schindler, I'm sorry, Elbin Schindler, $2 Super Chat, I love your video. Uh, how is the bathroom? We're gonna get over there momentarily, we'll take a look at that bathroom, but thank you so much for that Super Chat, my friend. Sorry, sometimes I get yapping away here and I don't, uh, I'm not uh, paying attention sometimes, but thank you very much for, for all the Super Chats. Uh, but anyways, look at this right here. So you have the, the, the Generation Gap Bridge, you have the, uh, the station right here. Imagine if they were to do a second station similar to this coming out right here. I think this would be a perfect spot to put another station so you would have a second set of towers that would come down here. And this actually goes right into uh, Osceola Drive. And Osceola goes right down past the um, All-Star Resorts, down past Blizzard Beach, and right into the Animal Kingdom, Animal Kingdom Lodge, etc. So, you know, imagine if you want to go to Epcot, you could get on here. If you want to go to Hollywood Studios, you can get on here. If you want to go to the Animal Kingdom, you could get on back here, take your ride down the lake, over to Osceola, down Osceola, maybe stop at the All-Stars, over to Blizzard Beach, uh, into the, uh, the Animal Kingdom. So that's just a speculation that I have. This would be a perfect spot to put that station. All kinds of uh, rumors and theories going on out there. You know, another awesome one is the fact that there's such larger gondola systems that are out there. There's gondolas that can hold up to 30 people out there right now. You know, maybe Disney's coming up with concepts to build even larger gondolas, maybe going in and out of the Magic Kingdom Transportation and Ticket Center. There's so many people that go in and out of there. You know, if they ever consider building that fifth gate, imagine, uh, you know, the size of that. You know, they could put a massive gondola system through there you know, a system that can hold 30 to 50 people in each gondola. Joshua, $2 Super Chat. Thanks again for the updates. Thank you very much for that Super Chat, my friend. I do appreciate that. Very cool back here. Can't wait for this fence to come down. And again, this is going to, this will be where you enter onto the system. So there should probably be uh, on either side, you should be able to have a walkway on either side. So you'd basically come on the Generation Gap Bridge and you'd get onto the gondola system here. I'm sorry. It's okay. There's a lot of nice lighting through here. This would be lit very well. <clears throat> this bridge is actually wider. This bridge is normally not this narrow, so it's about double the size of this, where the entrance would be there. Please pardon our appearance. The area is being refurbished for our enjoyment. It certainly is. And that's the, another thing I'd like to point out here. This is the original concept art, which the station is looking uh, tremendously similar, similar to this right now. But as you notice, there's those two white buildings. There's one here, and there's one on the other side. And that concept art does not show that here. They're, they're actually in there now. So I'm assuming those are being used for construction purposes, maybe storage, equipment, those kind of things. So hopefully those buildings are going to come down and it's going to look just like this, where you'll just be able to see all the way through, be able to see both, uh, both tracks in there. And I think it looks really, really nice like that if it's all wide open. And you can see the, you know, the two entrances you'll have one on this side, one on the opposite side as well, an, an entrance and an exit, basically. So we'll see those buildings again when we go around the other side. 
Hey Greg, Greg's Disney's Adventures. Thank you for being here. Always good to see you, my friend. The Florida feeling. Welcome. Sorry if I'm uh, missing some people here. See, David, uh, I love the way you are always thinking about the future possibilities. Can't wait to ride these gondolas next year when you, uh, when you come down. I can't wait for you to get on them either, my friend. Maybe we can ride them together. That would be awesome. Cindy, they do need another uh, form of transportation to the animal kingdom. Uh, I totally agree. And I think that might be a very good concept, what I was just talking about back there. So here we go. These are the restrooms. You can see the, the restroom sign is actually built there. I have a male, a female and a male restaurant, rest, I don't want to say restaurant, restroom here. The building matches perfectly to the station itself. I think that's awesome. I love the little retro swoop. And it really, really fits in well. The station, this restroom, I think they did a, a nice job of kind of pairing a design that would match both Pop Century and Art of Animation. You're getting the whimsical colors and the characters from the Art of Animation side, but then you're getting that really cool retro feel from the Pop Century side of the, the station itself. All right, we're starting to move again. This is a really pretty shot here. David, just like when the light bulb was invented, it changed the world. Now these gondolas will change Walt Disney World. Uh, I totally agree with that. This is the new landscape for, for Disney. I think this is going to be hugely popular. You know, as, as many people love to, uh, to come up with the negatives about it, I think there's so many positives. I think it's fun. I think it looks amazing. I think it adds so much character and so much depth to the, to the resorts. As you drive around Disney property, it's like seeing the monorail when you come in. It's, you know, you have to look and it just catches your eye and it becomes this, uh, this part of the landscape. And it's beautiful. It's, it's gonna have to be that go-to transportation. You come here to ride the monorail, you come here to ride the boat transportation, you come here to ride the train at the, at the Magic Kingdom, and you come here to ride the Disney Skyliner. Pete here, the gondolas uh, that turn out of the station, there are so many sh uh, sheave, wheels, sheave wheels in there. Um, there are, there's a lot of wheels that really make that whole process work through that 90 degree turn. That is not a, an easy feat to do that 90 degree turn. Uh, so that's pretty cool that they've, they've actually accomplished that there. Because as you look, um, again, you're releasing from that haul rope. So the timing has to be perfect on that 90 degree turn over at the boardwalk. Because you know, you're, you're releasing, the wheels are pulling you around. It has to go at a certain speed. You have to have so much spacing in between the gondolas. Um, and it's, it's just really cool to watch. I have videos where you can see that, that whole process taking place. Loves Disney's. Are the windows opened uh, by Disney or the people riding? Um, they should be open when you enter, depending on the day. But from what we saw from the interior, when Disney shared the, the interior of that gondola, it looks like there, it can be controlled by the rider. So say if you're in there and a really bad storm comes in and there might be some little bit of water coming in, you have the ability to close that, or maybe it's chilly outside and you want to close it. It looks like there's a mechanism in there that you can close those slots, those slats yourself. Now, whether or not they're locked, if Disney has to do it manually, uh, not sure about that, but I would assume that you should be able to have control over that when you're in there. And there's a very uh, fine kind of a mesh screen that goes over as well. So you can't, you know, you can't drop, uh, you know, pennies down on people's heads as you're, you know, going over the top of these places here. So that's there for safety reasons. Plus, you know, if it does start to rain and those, those slats are open, you know, that, that mesh will prevent a lot of that rain from coming in as well. Give a more, uh, more comfortable ride. 
and again it's all it's all speculation you come here and you you watch them you look at them up close and this is just kind of what I see as I come along each day until we physically actually get inside one and we ride it and we know how it feels what the capabilities are what we're actually hearing what we're seeing inside it's just what we can what we can tell right now but I think I'm pretty close to being accurate from from what I see a lot of the things that I've heard heard and talked to people about Mini fan, the gondolas are absolutely amazing. They're so beautiful. Brent, I hope Disney does some wraps like the park icon, Spaceship Earth, Tree of Life, Tower of Terror, and Cinderella's Castle. That would be awesome. I'm really glad that they brought in the Pirates and the Haunted Mansion, especially. So that was a bonus. But yeah, some, uh, some tributes to the parks would be cool. A Tree of Life, I think, would be beautiful. They've left so many gondolas unwrapped for that purpose, you know, for, for future entities that come, future movies if they want to put new characters. You know, I will say, if anything that I am a little disappointed in is the... I was really hoping for more, a, a more range of characters. I'm, I love what they've done. I mean, they went old school with Clarabelle Cow and Scrooge McDuck. Um, you know, they put the obviously the pirates and the, the haunted mansion on there. But there's a lot of repeats. You know, they, they put a couple chewies out there, they put a couple um, frozen gondolas out there. You know, I really wish they would have expanded into more characters um, and just made like one of each and put more out there. But again, you know, the, the sky is the limit. Literally, the sky is going to be the limit here. So I'm sure they're going to add more and more as we go along. Looks like this weather might hold out for us a little bit. It's starting to get a little windy, but I think the real, uh, the real weather is going to come a little bit later. Got some really severe storms out to the west of us. Here we get a good look at the, the pontoon boat. So you have multiple platforms there. So that can go right underneath the gondola. So again, it's a very, very easy process just to walk out. And then there's steps that can take you down. I'm assuming there, there probably is some sort of a ramp or a way to lower scooters down off of those platforms. Uh, there is actually a wheelchair on the back. You can see it parked right there. But this again is, is totally custom built for Disney, for Hourglass Lake. They built it right over, I have a video of them building this right over in that, uh, that work area that we saw in the beginning. And this, uh, this is going to be its permanent home here. They built the dock. They built the poles around it to keep it protected. Let's hope they never have to use it, but it's nice to know that they have such a, uh, a good piece of equipment to use here. And the other resources that they would use on the on land is basically scissor lifts, uh, crane lifts that they have, the flat platforms that go underneath the gondola as well. So you're not, you're not really going to find yourself in a situation to where you have to climb down a ladder or anything crazy like that. It's all going to be platform based. Very simple to walk out if you need to have any sort of an evacuation. You know, the odds of an evacuation itself are very slim, why they would need to do something like that. For the most part, they're going to recognize weather. There's all kinds of weather sensory equipment that they have that they know when to, you know, get people off of the gondolas. 
they can soup these gondolas up really quick. There was uh, rumors going around that they were actually running this haul rope at around 20 miles an hour during tests. And that would be the case if, uh, you know, any kind of a flash storm that would come in, they can really move these gondolas quickly to get people off into the stations. There's all kinds of protection on the towers, any kind of lightning strikes. Lightning can dissipate through the electrical cabling on the top. There's also guards for the, uh, the sheaves themselves, the wheels on the towers. If the haul rope for any reason were to dislodge from one of those sheaves, there's guards there that hold the rope so the rope cannot fall off the sheaves. There's actually uh, rope position detectors, they're called RPDs. And again, uh, I've learned this all along the way. And a big shout out to, uh, to Robbie again, Von Roll, for teaching me a lot of this stuff. But there's sensors that actually ensure that the, uh, the rope is running perfectly center on those wheels. And if there's any, uh... hang on, a bunch of carts going behind me here. If there's any uh, deviance from you know, that rope coming off center, if it moves for any reason, then they can also sh shut the system down very quickly to ensure safety. Got a lot of trees through this area here, so it's kind of hard to, to see. Every once in a while, you'll get a little gap in the trees mixed for some pretty cool pictures. It's a nice opening here. I'm actually thinking these yellow gondolas are my favorite. That was the first one that was unwrapped. The mustard and the yellow. I really like the bright yellow. I was thinking blue was gonna be my favorite, but I really like these yellow ones. Wait you sun, uh, it'll be interesting to see them do more practice evacs on the boats uh, uh, with the cast members. Yeah, hopefully we'll see, you know, along the way that they're actually taking real people in and out of the gondolas if they need to do that with the cast members or whatnot. Pete here, they should put uh, character art on the bottom of the gondolas. So when you look up, that's, that's a pretty cool idea, actually. You can see, like, their, their rear ends. <laughs> like, you would see their faces. And then like Mickey's, uh, Mickey shorts or legs, or how about like uh, Mickey feet, like out of the bottom of the gondola, like, like Mickey's holding on to the window and you see his face and his ears and his hands like holding on. And then on the bottom are like his feet hanging off. I think that would be awesome. They'll never do that, but because the feet, obviously you need clearance to go in and out of the stations, but I think that would be pretty funny. Ohana Magic, uh, you like the purple so far. Yeah, I think everybody's gonna have, uh, Corinne likes the purple too. I think everybody's gonna have their favorites, which is the best way to do it. I mean, you, that's what's so cool about it. There's a variety, there's something for everybody. Alex, they should have spent uh, extra money and add additional monorail track if they think the gondolas are going to handle uh, the Tron and Galaxy's Edge, when it opens, they're out of their minds. Actually, the, they're not out of their minds. This is a way to move a large amount of people in a very quick amount of time. 4,500 to 5,000 people an hour. That is a huge amount of people, and it's extremely expandable. Uh, it's constantly moving. So you're not waiting in these large, huge groups to wait to get onto the monorails. It's much, much less expensive. Uh, it's a lot easier to maintain. So this is the way of the future. I love the monorails. I'm not, uh, not knocking the monorails. I will love them till the day I die, but 
the Skyliner is the future, and it is, uh, it is very incredible. More Super Chats. Joshua Harris, $2 Super Chat. Thanks again for the updates, Rob. You are very, very welcome, my friend. David Cantrell, thanks for the videos. Stayed uh, at uh, Pop Century two weeks ago. It was awesome to see it physical at uh, Pop and Epcot. Thank you again for the uh, Super Chats. Very much appreciated. Um, and you are correct. To see them on video, you know, I try to give you guys the best perspective I can, you know, to get as close as I can to these. But it's really, you know, it's awesome to see on video, but until you really stand here and you're standing underneath one and you're watching them go back and forth, uh, I just hope that, that you all can actually get here and physically see them because it's, it's breathtaking when you get here. It's amazing. I mean, I know how beautiful that looks in the screen right now, but to see it in person is just completely mind-boggling to, to just see this hanging here in front of you. And just the, the mechanics of it, you know, how bright the colors are, the, the artwork is so crisp and so clear on it. Really a work of art. Here's a good look at the ventilation system. And again, as you're traveling traveling along, you know, you're gonna have the airflow that's gonna come in through the uh, those top slats and it's supposed to be sort of like a an air pressure sort of a force system so the air would enter through the top and then it's going to kind of rush down through the gondola and out the the lower windows through the back is how that process works then you have the ventilation on the sides as well and again we saw how reflective the uh the mirrored glass is in the beginning of the video, we saw the sun reflecting off of them. So I know there's a lot of, uh, a lot of haters out there about the AC and how they're gonna be, what have I heard so far, saunas, flying saunas, hot tubs, uh, incinerators. You know, it's, uh, it's gonna be a preference, obviously. You're more than welcome to, to ride any of the other modes of transportation, the bus. But, you know, and, and I love to point out this, this theory, um, you know, when you come to Disney, there's all these modes of transportation, including the boat transportation, which personally I love. I love riding the, the ferry boats back and forth between the, the Magic Kingdom and the Transportation Ticket Center. All of the boat transportation, say, to the Wilderness Lodge, over to the Polynesian, uh, to the Grand Floridian, uh, those are all open aired vessels so when you're on those you're basically getting out of the sun there's a roof on it but there's no air conditioning on these boats and people love coming to ride on these boats i personally love riding the boats and it's a very comfortable ride so it's going to be the same theory when you're inside here there's no air conditioning but you're out of the sun there's that airflow through there you're going to have a very comfortable ride while you're inside and if it's not for you then it's not for you if you don't like the heights then you know you might have to find another mode of transportation i'm petrified of heights you guys know that but I'm all on board of, of riding these gondolas. It's a, an extremely smooth ride. It's safe, it's gonna be comfortable, and it's so iconic. It's gonna be so much fun. <laughs> Are you watching me right now? Yes. Oh, that's awesome, I've been man. Following you I'm like, can I put you on, or is yeah, it? Yeah, all right. Yeah, that's fine. yeah they're watching me. I, was, I heard my voice in the background. I'm like, I hear it. <laughs> well, we were just over at Magic Kingdom. Oh, oh was that? Yeah, you were on there. Okay. Oh my gosh, Rob's over at our resort right now. We've got to get back there. That's awesome, man. We could not wait to meet you. Thank you so much. It's awesome. I mean, you're doing a great job. Fantastic. I appreciate that. It's gorgeous. I mean, when you see it up close, you've definitely. It is. Your videos are just as good to watch live as they are in person. That's, That's awesome. Fantastic. That's They're really cool to hear. Thank you so much. Yeah. I appreciate that. It's awesome. <laughs> I'm like, we're walking over here. I'm like, I'm totally geeking out right now. Like, <laughs> you want to get a selfie or something? Or do you... Sure. Yeah. All right, let's see. These guys know. No, they know. Everything. You're watching, you know how the videos are. It's live. Yeah. If you want to watch, you want to watch, you know? All right. Let's go. We need camera. All right. Which, which side do you want, hun? 
That side? I don't care. Right, we'll get over there quickly. <laughs> this way we can get him back to everybody else. And I'm gonna cut half my pad off. Hey, you can scoot over a little bit. Yeah, there Come we on, go. We'll get in there. All right, awesome. cool. Thank well, I think you. I'm caught on the fence here. It was great right. to meet you. You too. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you for Thank watching. You. Thank you so much. Here, I'll give you guys one of these. Oh, thank Fantastic. you. Cool. All right, man. Thank you. Take care. You met one of your friends. Who's that? Uh, Brian with a Y. Oh, Brian Melpass. Yeah. You saw him sing down at. Uh... No, uh, uh, a vacation club guy. Oh, vacation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He actually set us up. My daughter's uh, friends with with his daughter, he so said, yeah. He said that you have to do something for him, and you begged him not to go live. I said I'm going to tell him to go live with you. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. That's awesome. Thank Keep you. up the great See work. you guys. Thank you so much. I will. All right, that's always cool. I love that. I love hearing that people actually get a kick out of watching the videos and it actually makes a difference. So anytime I can meet people out there, that's like one of my, one of my highlights, absolutely. So that was very cool. See the lucky minute, the buses get a little uh, intimate at night sometimes for me, totally looking forward to this. Yeah, that's another uh, thing as well. You know, the buses, they can get really cramped. Not saying that the gondolas at peak times, you know, when the park is opening, when the park is closing, they're not gonna put the, you know, people in here that you may not be familiar with. For the most part, I think during the day, as you're traveling along, they're gonna keep it, you know, minimum, you know, get your family in there, five, six people. Uh, but at night, you know, when the parks are exiting and there's a lot of people getting on board, they're gonna, they're gonna put the max 10 people on here and you know, it's, it's just the way it is, it's Disney transportation. But definitely a lot less people than, than the bus. Uh, the buses really can cram some people in there. Sean, hi from uh, Sean and Debs in, uh, let's see, Barrow in the UK. Uh, going to Coronado Springs in October, looking forward to riding the Skyliner for the views. Keep up the good work, really enjoy the vlogs. Thank you so much, that is awesome. Uh, you know you're gonna love uh, Coronado Springs. I, I say that all the time, it's definitely one of the premier resorts out there now especially with what they're doing cast members are phenomenal there you're gonna have an incredible time bolt clan i hope um, to see you and uh, tim tracker at disney one day we're both around all the time so absolutely hopefully we'll run into each other that would be awesome p tier glare hate <laughs> is that gonna be the new hashtag modeling disney hey welcome uh, your fans love you, brother. Yeah, that is very cool. I love, I love meeting people and talking to people. You know, it happens on the live videos. I, I do apologize for that sometimes, but it's, uh, it's definitely one of my favorite things. You can really get a great view now, straight down. Now that they've taken the fencing down, you get a beautiful view right down into the Caribbean Beach Station. Look at that. That is, it's just so so cool it was amazing to see him wrapped all the white gondolas wrapped up but seriously to see these gondolas unwrapped how beautiful they are to see them all down in the row so incredible see a lot of my pictures i take right here this is like perfect spot see these palm this palm tree is in a lot of my pictures these flowers are in a lot of my pictures so if you're coming here and you want to get really good pictures this is like a great spot to do it anywhere around hourglass lake you're not going to go wrong wait to some please don't apologize i i apologize for everything i'm just uh considerate i guess uh, can you wish Debs uh, a happy birthday? Absolutely. Everybody wish Debs a happy birthday. Angela, hi, Rob. Uh, we are from uh, Cumbria, too. Stay there on the 28th of September at the Coronado. Uh, say hi to Dave, my husband. We love your videos. Hello, Dave, the husband. I'm a husband, too, so I know all about that. So thank you guys so much for watching.
Brad, do I think it'll open early? Um, I hope so. You know, it's from what Disney has been doing, they've been opening ahead of schedule on a lot of different things. So this looks to be really on track. And again, if you use your eyes and you look around, you see things like this happening, fences coming down, landscaping being done, stations being completed, uh, really on schedule to be completed, I should say. The Caribbean Beach Station looks amazing. It all really comes down to how quickly they can get that station done, uh, at least to open the Hollywood Studios line and possibly this line as well. Epcot is probably gonna rely more on Ratatouille. And from what we saw the other day, the Ratatouille facade is really well constructed. It's pretty much all up, so you can't really see inside. So depending on how far that gets and how, what Disney wants to allow people to see going over uh, would, would kind of depend on how that line will open up. So yeah, I, I have a pretty good feeling about them opening early. Bolt Clan, your updates are the best. Thank you, thank you so much. See, uh, R. Ru, that's cool. Uh, those things are lower than I thought they would be. Yeah, there's, there's different points. I think over the lake here, um, a couple of reasons. Obviously, they want you close to the water just for the view. I think it's so pretty. You know, you can see, especially on very clear days, I bet you're gonna see into the water. So you might actually see like fish and turtles swimming around in there, which would be really neat. But they also need to be close to the water for the rescue purposes. Obviously, they built that pontoon boat at that height for a reason. So they needed to, to have a rescue height here. So as soon as you come out of the water, you see it jumps up onto the higher towers here. And this is one of the lower runs throughout the system. Uh, Hollywood, as soon as you cross over uh, uh, Victory Way and head through that wooded area, that's a pretty tall area. I think the highest points are through Caribbean Beach and down Buena Vista Drive. Those are the, uh, the highest towers and those are at about 60 feet. These towers here are probably, I don't know, I can't guess, maybe 30 feet, 25, 30 feet. So here's the, uh, the placards. We've been seeing these plaques on the top of the towers. This one says uh, TPD. Uh, so we have two THS. Uh, Tower Hollywood Studios, or two Hollywood Studios, however you want to say it. We saw uh, TIG the other day, which was Tower International Gateway. So TPD. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put that out there and see if anybody can guess what that is. You might have to, you might have to think that one out just a little bit. TPD. Corinne, 60 feet shutters. I'm not a heights person either, but I think once you're going... You know, starting on a line like this where it's close to the water and it's low, and then you gradually kind of make your increase, I think this will be a little easier for me to handle. You know, when you shoot out of the, uh, the, Caribbean, the Caribbean station uh, straight up onto those higher towers, that's, that's going to be a little, a little shaky for me as a heights person, but I don't think it's going to be bad at all. These things run like butter. I mean, they are so smooth. They glide along so well. Beth, hi from uh, Georgia. We're planning a May 2020 trip for my son's first birthday. Love the videos, very, very cool. I've been bringing Cammie here since she was one year old. So there's, you're never too young to start here. Robbie, have a great day. Uh, back to work, another uh, model Von Roll Skyway. Robbie, thank you so much for being here as always. Have a great day at work, my friend. We'll talk soon. Aru. Uh, you're the only vlog I saw cover the opening of the three bridges at Coronado Springs. Uh, and I pretty much watched them all. So thanks for that. Great videos. Uh, that is awesome. I was, I was actually the very first guest to be served at uh, the Three Bridges restaurant at Coronado. First one to walk through, first one to sit down, first one to get my food. So that was pretty awesome. You can see that, uh, that whole review at PassportToTheParks.com. I had a lot of fun. Coronado is awesome. My waitress, Jamie, fantastic there. If you go, request Jamie. She is outstanding. We actually went back for a, a night visit. We have some desserts and some drinks. Requested Jamie again and she was, she was awesome. So is anybody getting the, uh, the TPD yet? Anybody figure that out? Oh, Tower Park Direction. Uh, nope, that's not it. 
Bolt Clan, the Coronado Springs uh, opens July 9th. Yes, it does. Brad Santa Caribbean Beach on July 10th. I doubt be ready uh, that early though. Yeah, it's they'll probably be doing cast member testing. Maybe, maybe, maybe a soft opening, possibly, but I, I would doubt it that close. The lucky minute, do you think they will hang much lower uh, while full of people? Uh, they've been adding a lot of weight here, so that droop that you see is pretty pretty accurate. They put a full load of water weights inside these gondolas, so they, they pretty much weigh these things down to max weight uh, as they're running them. You know, they, they want a full load, they want as much weight on these on the haul rope as possible. Um, you definitely don't want to find out what the haul rope can, can handle when you're putting people on board. So they do all of their full weight testing prior to that. So you're not going to see much more sag in the rope. In fact, in my last video, in my uh, International Gateway video, and you can see it on Facebook too, um, one of the water weights actually burst inside one of the yellow gondolas. So you can see it, it's leaking. It's like raining down in the parking lot at, at Boardwalk. It's kind of funny. <laughs> the BOMO uh, Tokyo Peking Duck. I, I actually like that one better, Tokyo Peking Duck. The Passport Dude, there you go. Zippity do that. The shrimp corn dogs were, were very good. Very, very good indeed at, uh, at the Three Bridges. I actually like the cheese dip. Order the cheese dip when you get here. Brad, tower probably dented. There you go. There's another two-park drive. I got that one. Passport dude. These are all great guesses. I would have never come up with any of these. Tom, hey, Rob, do you know if they were planning on painting the towers or leave them the galvanized look? Uh, you know, the way it's looking now, they're probably going to leave them the way it is. You know, they, they put up those go-away green towers at the International Gateway, and those were installed as is. If they were to do anything, if they were to possibly paint the towers through the Caribbean beach, that would be the big one. They would do it at the very end, because they have to do all their testing, all the stress testing, and they, they check these towers. They do actual like x-ray scans on the, the towers themselves, make sure there's no cracks, to make sure there's no shifting. So they wouldn't paint them prior to doing that. But you know, as much as we want to see the paint on the towers, I, I don't know if it's gonna happen. I, I don't see it happening. And the more and more you watch the gondolas now, it really doesn't bother me even through the Caribbean beach, you know, you kind of get used to them and you, you see the gondolas themselves. The gondolas stand out so much. They're so beautiful. They're so vibrant. So the, the painted towers really so much doesn't bother me anymore. Jason, uh, Tower Pop Depot. That's uh, that's pretty close. Tower Pop Disney. That's a good one too. Actually, um, it's kind of a, uh, an internal code that uh, that is called uh, Disney's Art of Animation. So it's DAR, D-A-A-R, Disney's Art of Animation Resort. I should say Disney's Art of Animation Resort. So it would be two pop DAR, pop and DAR, or tower pop and DAR is what that would mean. So there you go, little, uh, little lingo. So if you hear that you're going to pop and DAR, that's what that means. It's Pop Century and Disney's Art of Animation Resort. <clears throat> Mickey Sightings, I think the current color actually blends well. I think it does too. Well, especially when you get cloudy, nasty days like this, they, they blend in very well. That was a joke. But during the summer, you're going to get a lot of rain. So look, that tower completely blends into the sky. <laughs> Starting to feel the raindrops here. Maybe we'll stick around for a few. Maybe we'll get some, uh, some heavier winds that might kick up a little bit. We'll see how these react once the, the weather starts rolling in. You guys are welcome to, to hang out with me. Unless you have better things to do than hang out at Disney. Bolt Clan, I'm glad I live only an hour and a half from Disney World. 
hour and a half is great. I lived uh, a thousand miles before, and now I moved uh, 15 minutes away. But an hour and a half is perfect, man. You gotta drive down here, enjoy this. Or up here, I'm not sure where in Florida you would actually be. I just, I love, oh, I love this view so much. I mean, you look, you get real low, see it up into the clouds. When the sky is really bright crystal blue with the big puffy clouds and the water is really calm, it looks just like a mirror. Even on days like this with the, the stormy clouds and everything, it still looks very, very cool. Just get that, the shadow of the gondola with that sky behind it. Margaret, sort of like the uh, the monorail, just blends in after the cars go by. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the monorail has, what, those tannish color concrete pillars, and I mean, that's it is what it is. You know, it's that's a great point, actually. The monorail is not like a, uh, a vibrant, whimsical color in front of the Magic Kingdom, like it has to match the amazing Magic Kingdom and the, the motif there. It is what it is. It's, it's transportation. Um, you know, the towers are just going to become part of that landscape, just like the track for the, for the monorail. Good point. I'm going to use that in the future. Sean, you're 4,128 miles from the Animal Kingdom. That is way too far, my friend. You need to cut that down by about 4,105 miles. <laughs> that would be perfect then. zippity doo -dad, I gotta get going. Uh, hit that like button, everyone. Thank you again for being here. zippity doo -dad, always appreciate it, my friend. Pinchy 08, I wish I was at Disney, but my seasonal annual pass is blocked out over the summer. Yeah, that's okay. That's that's still a great annual pass, though, the, the one that gets blocked out. I think that's silver. Um, you know, because a lot of people don't enjoy coming here through the summer. It's very hot, it's very humid, and it rains a lot. But you can come, you know, through most of the, the other times through the year when it's less crowded. Uh, the weather, weather is a little nicer. Eric, what do I think of the new annual pass prices? You know, it, it is what it is. It's as Disney expands, they put more in here. They're going to start charging more for it. It's you know, as as a consumer, as a person who loves Disney, that's not you know rich by any means. Yeah, it, it stings. It stings everybody trying to get here, and you know, it, it kind of excludes some people who may never ever get the chance to come here. Um, but you know, in a way. You know, they, they have to compensate for what they're doing. Disney is, is creating state of the art. I mean, they're creating things that are unlike anything else in the world. So, you know, they gotta up the price a little bit to do so. Uh, so be it, you know, people outside of being a resident here definitely got the sting a little more than the, um, the Florida annual pass holders. Uh, the parking even went up a little bit, uh, which the parking, you know, in itself, you know, most, most hotels that you go to, you know, big cities and resorts and things like that, they charge you for the parking no matter what. Disney has always sort of been uh, not, the, uh, not the resorts to do that, and they're, they're just sort of getting on board to what other resorts are doing. All right, I think I'm going to take my umbrella out here. It's going to start to rain a little bit. Pardon the, uh, the shakiness a little bit, if I can do this one-handed. Got my trusty Disney Parks umbrella. There we go. All right, we're going to do this. We're going to watch it in the rain. Yeah, it's starting to come down pretty good now. 
I don't know, there's something about the rain. But it's just very, very cool here at Disney. And Disney people are crazy. I mean, they come here and are prepared with the ponchos and the umbrellas, which, you know, it's completely understandable because, you know, you're paying an arm and a leg to get in the parks. And rain or shine, you got to enjoy those parks. So you're walking around there and lightning crashing down and, you know, hurricane force winds and everything. And people are running around in their ponchos. And which is another great thing about living here is that on those kind of days, it's okay that you can just kind of chill out and do something else. Let's see, giving up Kev, a uh, longtime watcher. Sorry, I only have one hand here now that I have my umbrella. Uh, you're going to be staying at Caribbean Beach on June 29th. Can't wait to see the Skyliner in person. Absolutely, it's going to be awesome. I'm telling you, it's, it's so much awesome, awesomer, cooler, better to see it in person. <laughs> Mini fan, we wish they had known uh, prior to the price hike, we would have gone ahead and renewed. Yeah, yeah, no, I wish Disney would give a little, uh, little heads up on that stuff because I guess it's business, though, because everybody would just renew at that point. Dawn from Canada, the only place you love the rain. Yeah, like I said, this is the only place where people will actually stand out in the rain and not, not have an issue with it. Eric, see-through umbrella. Uh, let's see, hang on. See-through umbrella, nine-inch umbrella for $14. Yeah. I actually got, I've had this one for a long time. I got this one when it was pretty cheap. I think it was like five or six bucks, but that was... That was years ago that I bought this thing. Still holding up though. Both uh, Art and Pop are great resorts. Glad they have the Skyliner. Yeah, this is a huge addition here. And it's perfect for it. I mean, this you could not have picked a better location to put the Skyliner over top of Hourglass Lake. Everything that surrounds you, the, the two resorts, and just over top of the water. I mean, it's gorgeous. You know, unless you were to go through the center of, say, Crescent Lake over by the boardwalk and things like that, I mean, that would be an amazing view. You know, I'm hoping that they, I would be kind of torn about going over the Seven Seas Lagoon. If they were to ever do a Skyliner over there, I don't believe they would bring it to the front entrance. But, I don't know, I would be, I would be iffy on that one at going over Seven Seas. That's that has a look all of its own. That's a very, very classy, classic look there. If they do it, I would assume they would probably put it into the Transportation and Ticket Center. But I don't know, they, they may bring it in. You know, you could bring it over to the side, maybe to the side of the monorail. Junior, have you seen them testing when it rains? Uh, they usually shut down when it does start to rain. They can definitely run in these conditions, this is nothing, it's just raining. There's no wind or anything right now. So if you're on board, they're still running. They've just been stopped here for a while. I've seen, uh, I have a video of them actually over at the International Gateway to where they're rocking back and forth pretty well in the wind. But these, uh, these are rated up to about 40 miles an hour for the wind. Not that they're gonna keep you on board at 40 miles an hour, they'll, they'll have you off way before that, but. Uh, lightning within five mile radius is usually the uh, the shutdown radius. But in normal rain conditions like this, you're, you're gonna be going back and forth. Corinne, goodbye, thank you for being here. Charles, you're getting the same weather up in uh, Atlanta. Yeah, this is going all up and down the coast. Brad, do you see lightning rods on top of the towers? Uh, what are those thin poles at the top? Uh, they are actually equipped to, to handle lightning strikes. Uh, and when you look, there's two cables um, on, the, on the top. It's kind of, I can't really point because of my umbrella but you have three cables that run across the top. The center cable is for communications back and forth between the towers. The two outside cables on the top are actually electrical conduit cables. So if one of the towers were to receive a strike that would dissipate down through those cables and it can dissipate 
all through the entire system and, and is grounded. So it can, it can withstand the lightning strikes. That's what those, those cables are actually for. And then of course you have the, the haul rope that's the two cables on the bottom that you see there going through the, the sheaves. So again, uh, very safe. You know, you're not going to get lit up if there's, for any reason, if it were to occur. You know, it's safe, it's grounded. But again, you're going you're gonna to be shutting down if you have any sort of lightning within that five mile radius. It, it might even be even wider than that. Brad, yeah, I was, I was just explaining that. The, the center cable is the, um, the communications cable. Then the two uh, outside cables are the uh, electrical cabling. Okay, everybody. I think uh, I think that should do it. Looks like we got a little bit of rain, but doesn't look like too much uh, else coming in at the moment. I may stick around. Sorry, I got my umbrella in front of my face. That's rude. But uh, I may stick around here for a little bit and see if anything kicks up. I'll just get some normal video of it so you guys can can check that out. Uh, I'm gonna go find a little bit of a drier spot. Uh, I may hang out on property here for a little bit longer and do some other stuff. Uh, so we may talk soon, or I may go home. We'll see. Uh, but anyways, thank you for being here. Hopefully uh, you got some great information about this, uh, the Skyliner here, the testing. Again, they were doing the uh, voice testing earlier and talked about uh, how the station works down there and just uh, cool stuff like that. So hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, definitely check out PassportToTheParks.com. Uh, subscribe here if you haven't done that. Hit that like button. And again, thank you for all the super chats. Uh, I want to make sure that I didn't miss any other ones. Uh, David, I believe I got David Cantrell. Thank you so much for that, uh, that $5 one. Thank you for all the super chats up there. It's much appreciated. You guys know that. Um, until the next time, we'll find something cool to do. Uh, we'll talk to you guys very, very soon. Bye-bye. Let me hit my button. Very professional. <laughs>